Muslim businesses suffer attacks by Hindu vigilantes. In India, the economic marginalization of Muslims in India is becoming more apparent as small-time vendors, shop owners, and even industrialized businesses are often attacked by Hindu nationalists. Attacks against Muslim-owned businesses come in many forms. Violence is usually reserved for Muslim men who conduct business in the streets. Big-scale businesses suffer severe online disinformation campaigns. At the same time, policymakers create a legal atmosphere that puts unnecessary pressure on Muslim-owned companies. Quote, we have nowhere to complain. The police and the municipality officials side with such groups, said uh, Afzal, a business owner in Uttar Pradesh. As nearly half of Muslims in urban India are self-employed, this trend of attacks against small vendors could have far-reaching economic implications. These people are just giving the saffron color a bad rap. <laughs> Every time I see the saffron cover in the, tire, in the cover, I'm like, oh, you know, no, it's going to be again. some shit. <laughs> it's kind of like, oh no, what is it going to be? Uh, what are they doing? What is Hindus for doing this time? Like, this is going to turn into a color of fear in India. Like, every time you see men, it already with is. These are you kidding me? Yeah. Like Especially on Valentine's Day, like when couples see men walking around with like a saffron sash, like they're like, it's Bajrang doll. Like, I got to get the F out of here. They're going to beat us up. Yeah. I, I, I wonder if Muslim children's nightmares are filled with the Zaf men with saffron color flags and you know like you just like you see the you see the people with these colors coming in the from the corner in the street and you're like you're like oh my god we're like what the hell just could run I, I bet you like they would like to know that that this this color brings fear into people's hearts you know yeah. how like some like Muslim ra radicals they like they like the idea of saying Allah Akbar brings fear to to the heart of their enemies. They're like, look how powerful we are. They're just mentioning the name of Allah just make our enemies tremble, right? And I think like a lot of these Hindus want to have the same effect on the most uh, on their Muslim population. They, they want probably to, feel to that be, same way about saying Jai Shri Ram. Dry, yes, which is the Hindu version of Allah Akbar. Yeah. They want, yeah, they want to be able to when they say that. To, for you to cower in fear because you could you you recognize their power and their might and their superiority and mm -hmm. for you to have to acknowledge your place as you know in society as beneath them basically second class this, well yeah these i are wanted just men wanting to be like being manly i guess this is what people refer to when they're talking about toxic masculinity I guess. Yeah. yeah. A lot of this actually yeah. comes from economic um, uh, insecurity and in essentially being unemployed and not having anything better to do and also needing something to make you feel like purposeful, like a strong member of your community. So if you're unemployed and you're not contributing as a young man, like this mm. is a very easy way to literally join a gang and feel like you're a part of something bigger than yourself. Um, but I yeah. wanted to give some examples of what I'm talking about when I'm saying like, oh, these Muslim businesses are being targeted, you know, not be so generalized about it. So for example, on September 23rd, two Muslim men in Mathura, a temple town in Uttar Pradesh were badly beaten for carrying meat. Earlier that month, the government decided to make a large part of the city alcohol and meat free. About a month ago, an indoor city of uh, Madhya Pradesh, also governed by the BJP, a Muslim Bengal seller, meaning like the bracelets, um, Taslin Ali was beaten up because of selling his wares in a Hindu locality, allegedly under an assumed Hindu name. So basically what they mean is like you're in a Hindu neighborhood selling bangles and you're, you're, the name of your business is a Hindu name and we're going to beat you up for fooling in people into thinking you're Hindu. Like that's the thinking and motivation. Wow. And this happens to restaurants. 
very often. Restaurants will maybe have a name that sounds Hindu, but they're Muslim owned and they will go and force the business to change their name so that people aren't tricked into thinking they're supporting Hindus. This is also, it, even it becomes so abstracted that there's been instances of like a restaurant will have a dish that's Muslim owned and it's the dish is like named after a goddess and gangs will show up to like force them to change, intimidate them. Um, another You're example, in India, you can't have Hindu names for your restaurant in India because of your identity. Like you, you can't name your business, something Hindu you're in India. Like, God damn it. Like yeah, you go and check your religious background before to decide what names you can use for your business. Well, because yeah, they... again, it almost it kind of plays into like a love jihad mentality, right? It's yeah, like yeah. these sneaky Muslims, they trick you into thinking that they're friends with you, into thinking that they're one of you, and they're not. This is an insidious plan. Like, YouTube, hmm. I'm not saying this, okay? Yes. This is, this is me right. trying to capture the attitude of other people, okay? Another example yeah. is that um, in... Unjain city in the same state of uh, Madhya Pradesh, a Muslim scrap dealer was forced to shout Jai Shri Ram, uh, which means victory to Lord Ram, a war cry used by Hindu supremacist groups. Um, a force, uh, no, sorry, a, um, an owner of a horse carriage in Lucknow was forced to chant um, D, uh, D to Pakistan. I'm going to let you fill in the blank there because I can't say that on YouTube. Forced to chant just D spell it. Uh, D E A T H uh, mm -hmm. to Pakistan on the basis of a flake claim that he had hoisted a Pakistani flag on his carriage. Then again in uh, Mathura, a Muslim eatery owner was forced to change its name to uh, Srinath Dosa from Srinath Dosa to American Dosa Corner because right wing groups objected to him using the name of a Hindu god. Oh God! You know any of these things? If if something remotely similar to this happened once in the United States or in Canada or in Western Europe, people would be losing their mind, right? Imagine if you had like a like and in, and rightfully so, okay? Imagine like if if a bunch of goons like showed like captured a black person in um, United States, like a bunch of like you know, white supremacists, like attack a black man. And they're like, we'll let you go after you say, I don't know, D D E A T H to BLM. And then we will let you go. And imagine if that was like happened and th like we, that would, that would be on the headline news, not, not in the United States, but globally, globally, that would be like, look how bad the situation in the United States is again. It should be covered globally. I'm not saying like, oh my God, they would be exaggerating how big of a problem this is. No, that is legitimately a story that needs highlighting of how bad situations are, right? But when when the far right does it in India, it's only news in India. Like, why is the rest of the world not taking note of the fact that we have the biggest rise of the far right is happening in India? But go on, Susanna. Well, I also wanted to emphasize that this isn't just an issue that's happening on like a micro um, person to person level, right? So for example, um, when the BJP came into power in Uttar Pradesh in 2017, one of the first things they did was to shut down slaughterhouses and meat shops. And they were saying, oh, well, this is because they weren't following regulations. And then ever since then, no like updated regulations or anything has ever come into place or been enacted. Like they just shut them down wholesale and people might be like, okay, well, this seems kind of legitimate, except when you start to consider one, it's Uttar Pradesh, which is the chief minister is, um, oh, I can never say his name, right? Yogi Adithya. And he has said some of the most vitriolic stuff about Muslims I've ever heard. And that's a large part of his public campaign and like persona and rallying cry in many ways. Um, and also when you consider that historically it's most often Muslims who are the owners 
of slaughterhouses and meat shops, which makes sense. So they are targeting a part of the economy or an industry that is historically in, um, I don't know, I'm going to assume the majority of which is Muslim owned. When you take also into account that, like I said earlier, nearly 46% of Muslims in urban India are self-employed. So when the businesses are being targeted on the front of the state, even regulating what you can and cannot do, but then in terms of um, trying to intimidate and terrify these small vendors into saying, you can't go into like, must, I mean, you can't go into Hindu neighborhoods basically to go sell your wares. They're now going to be confined into smaller and smaller places where they can actually go and hopefully turn a buck and gain economic opportunity because it's like um racial um, I, as an american equivalent would be like racial intimidation based off of being in the wrong neighborhood you know it's saying you can't sell this here are you kidding me like um i want to give that comparison to hopefully like help people understand like that the gross feeling you should be having <laughs> how disgusting all of this is yeah this is com you know i i this is such a good point, Susanna, because I I constantly get this feeling that a lot of people who are not Indian, when they hear these stories, they're like, oh, that's bad. And they agree that this is bad, but they don't get the same disgust reaction that they would rightfully get if the victims were like, you know, in in Western countries and the victims were black or Jewish. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I have to constantly say this, like if the victims are black and Jewish, the disgust feeling that you get is justified. It should be there. But I don't see I don't see why people don't get the same disgust reaction when Hindus are doing this to Muslims or Sunni Muslims are doing this to Shia Muslims or Shia Muslims are doing this to Sunni Muslims. Like, But it is exactly the same thing if this was white people, some white, like, I don't know, radical group doing this to black people or some some you know neo yahtzees and i say yahtzees we're doing this to mm -hmm. like some jewish group jewish people i just think that the reaction is just not there you want to say something well what's so ironic is that some um spokesperson or let me uh find the exact um title of the person but basically some people are saying like the quiet part out loud so um there was a um journalist who was being interviewed and in, in part of looking at the economic impact of how this is going to affect this community as a whole and they said quote the bjp government has been speaking against muslims since it came to power just by speaking against them is not enough to win the hearts of their hindu supporters in the politically charged state um, the Muslim community has to be brought to its knees by economically marginalizing them either for even further. This is done uh, in order to send a signal to the Hindu electorate that Muslims are being shown their place. But wow. there was um, a Hindu mass gathering in January of 2021 um, when this anti-Muslim preacher, Swami Adnan uh, Swarup, said that Hindus should decide that they will not buy anything from Muslims. So just boycotting any Muslim business. And he said to a crowd of hundreds, quote, if you destroy them socially, politically, and economically, they will begin converting to Hinduism from Islam. This is who? Who said this again? An, an anti-Muslim preacher in Uttar Pradesh. Yeah. At a Hindu... Um uh panchayat just says mass gathering in parentheses hmm. one last thing i want to highlight is that it's go on but you didn't pick up on the most important thing what he is saying that this is how they are going to pressure muslims into converting oh, to hinduism this is like the love like and they are the ones who accuse people of love jihad is that what you're getting yes but through social and economic intimidation what yeah this is what Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. This is what, what should I... <laughs> Such a good... Yep, Susanna, perfect point. This is like they accuse Muslims of love jihad 
trying to bring Muslim, trying to bring Hindus to Islam with love, and they consider this like a crime, a, accusations of demographic engineering, and yet they are the ones who are doing this at a mass scale through in collectively, through threat, collectively through violence and intimidation. <laughs> that's a, <laughs> that's a great point. That's fantastic. That that is that's a very good point. Um, amazing. The hypocrisy, this, the hypocrisy is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You're right. Because next time if, from now on, every time they come up with this love job conspiracy theory, instead of pointing to Kashmir, which is like a lot of people don't agree about what's happening in Kashmir, this would be a more easy thing to point to about like, you know, no, you, you are the ones doing the demographic engineering. And not through love, but through violence. And you say it to a crowd of hundreds of people. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You brag about. You openly brag about it. God damn. It. Again, I don't. When I say you, we have to be careful not to collectively hold all. When we say you, we're talking specifically about the people who make these types of accusations and yet endorse these kinds of policy and attacking Muslims. Right. When we say you, we're not referring to all Hindus. We're not even referring to all of Hindutva. Okay. We're specifically talking about the people who think and say these things. Okay. Um, la last point I wanted to highlight was about the fact how sensitive these people are about people who might be endorsing Pakistan and how hateful they are against Pakistan as an entire country. And yet they are the people who are making India get closer to becoming like Pakistan more than anyone else. Right. Like, you are you are you are pakistanizing india you're making it harder and harder for us to to tell tell you apart and you're becoming what you hate so congratulations to hindutva in making india more like pakistan every single day um again i'm not saying they're the same i acknowledge that pakistan is a lot worse right uh, but you're getting closer. You're moving to that towards that direction, right? All right. India came after us a lot harder than Pakistan ever did. Yeah, but but more people die from blasphemy in Pakistan. Yeah, and yeah. like yes, our experience has been worse with India, but overall experience for most people is worse but a lot worse with pakistan hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy cali you know like me then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below because if you subscribe we will send you a free copy of our blasphemous art ebook and let me tell you it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below